Hi, I'm Natasha Vitamore. Welcome to Super Longevity Holiday Party Worldwide. We're set up to interconnect with various nodes around the world to celebrate the advances in biomedical research in our aim for super longevity. Enjoy. Thank you. So I'd like to say uh, a toast to um, two things, open-mindedness and aiming high. Um, but of course, the, uh, uh, the fact remains that there is a spectrum of degrees of acceptance of different projects, different areas of research that are necessary for our mission. Uh, we still have very much a problem that cryonics is uh, underappreciated and that needs to be fixed. Um, and it's not the only thing. So we are, um, you know, we still have those of us who are of the more radical persuasions in this community definitely still have a great deal still to do. I think it's always important to recognize that my estimates and indeed everybody's estimates about the time frame for reaching longevity escape velocity are 50% estimates. In other words, I say we have a 50% chance of getting there in 15 years. But I always emphasize the enormous amount of variance on that. In other words, I always point out that, um, you know, we have at least a 10% chance of not getting there for 100 years. Points that relate to uh, Aubrey, actually. So one of them is that uh, Aubrey uh, is interested in a project in which uh, organ crop preservation might be facilitated by perfusing the whole organ with cold helium gas. And that was promulgated by Tanya Jones uh, and Steve Van Sickle uh, in a company called Aragos, uh, which did not have a very good outcome. But Aubrey was very interested in whether the fundamental feasibility of that project existed or not. So he asked me to see if we could get some information about that at 21st Century Medicine. So what we did is um, uh, we got a grant uh, that was funded through Methuselah Foundation, thanks to Aubrey uh, and some crypto people who uh, put their money in to, to fund it. And uh, we are going to evaluate the endothelial cells in pig kidneys that are vitrified using uh, conventional cooling and warming techniques or using the Aragos helium perfusion techniques. Okay, so uh, there's a little bit of other news I want to share with everybody. I asked uh, Max Moore um, and Natasha when I came uh, to the party this evening if they had uh, heard any uh, news about Laura Deming lately. So she has uh, funded several uh, aging biotechnology companies, but her conclusion is that we really need cryonics because uh, she does not think that necessarily uh, the aging companies are going to be able to solve the problem of aging in our lifespan. So uh, she has just started a new company. She's funded it with $50 million in initial upfront uh, investments. Uh, it's going to be devoted to brain crowd preservation and uh, 21st century medicine will be working uh, closely with her uh, to see how we can work together to make this happen. So I'll just very briefly say that uh, in addition to doing organ banking research at 21st century medicine, I, I also do aging research as many of you know. So we completed the TRIM trial a few years ago it uh, achieved a fair amount of fame because we developed uh, evidence that it's possible to reverse aging in humans right now using repurposed drugs. Of course, we don't know about aging in general. All we, all we know about is what you can measure, but the epigenetic clocks of aging are the best measures of aging that we have. And based on that, people were younger at the end of the trial than they were at the beginning of the trial, even though the trial itself took a year to, for them to complete. So we are now uh, working on TRIMX uh, to replicate those results and expand them to a larger uh, group of people, including women. I'm pleased to say that the, the women seem to respond very well to the TRIM treatment. So the, the, the new trial is called TRIM-X, X standing for the extension of the original TRIM trial. So we're real happy about that. Of course, it's gonna take a long time before we get to the end of this story, 
uh, but uh, so far so good. So I, I guess that's all that I will say, except the one little extra thing, and that is that we spent a lot of time working on brain crowd preservation at 21st century medicine, using structure as the endpoint, ultrastructure, how, how good the brain looks in the electron microscope. And uh, we have a paper that uh, most of you are aware of uh, in preparation that shows that not only can we preserve uh, ultrastructure in animal brains, we can also preserve uh, brain structure in human brains, at least the, the one human brain that uh, we were able to, to, to test, thanks to uh, cooperative research with Alcor. So we want to uh, get that paper off and get that published uh, next year. And if we can do that, then hopefully that will change the debate about cryonics. So uh, I think that's the, the update for now. And uh, enjoy the rest of the party and enjoy what Max has to say. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm going to be pretty brief. Um, that's actually great to what Greg said, because basic messages and everybody pay attention if you're not already signed up for cryonics. What is wrong with you? Get off your butt. <laughs> Uh, especially if you're not 25 years old, if you're like me, 57 or 60s or 70s, you really have no excuse. Uh, you're being over optimistic if you are convinced that life extension is going to take off fast enough. I've been watching this for three and a half decades or more, and we still don't have anybody who's beaten a uh, comments record of 122 years. In fact, recently uh, we're going backwards a little bit in this country. So don't rely on that. Don't, uh, th don't tell yourself that everything's going to work out fine because it probably isn't. You need to have your cryonics arrangements in place. That should be part of a life extension portfolio. Uh, you know, just when you're investing in financial instruments, you have some things that are pretty safe, you have things that are more risky and more aggressive, and you have different, different kinds of investments, and cryonics is part of your life extension investment. Uh, so it's actually it's great, you know, what, what Greg was saying, we're very much looking forward to this paper that Alcor also cooperated with. I think that will be very powerful in getting more people convinced that this is something quite workable. Some uh, additional very powerful evidence that we're actually preserving the structure of the brain, all the stuff that really matters. And in fact, Alco's got a, a lot of research projects underway, partly thanks to uh, our big $5 million donor from a couple of years ago, which is really funding a lot of research. And we have a lot of things in the pipeline, which I think will also add to the evidence base for cryonics. <clears throat> I hope people, anybody who's listening who is not sign up for cryonics, really needs to go to the Alco website and take a look and absorb that information or email me. And uh, you know, don't leave it till too late. We get too many people calling up at the last minute if we left it too late and something has happened and they can't get insurance and it doesn't work out. So uh, you need to get that in place. It's kind of, I think a good test of how serious people are. You know, back in the old days at the extra conferences, we would have people stand up and say, well, who in the audience has signed up for cryonics? And about half the people at that time were signed up. Um, and it's interesting how that hasn't really grown a whole lot uh, since because it actually takes some work to get signed up and to make your arrangements. But that's really no excuse. That's kind of the main thing I want to say. And just to note that the Alcor 50 conference, our 50th year, is actually taking place in February. And there will be an event in New York in February. Um, but the main Alcor conference we're planning, hopefully we can have this in person. Um, that will be in Scottsdale, Arizona in, I think, the second weekend of June of 2022. So Alcor will be 50 years old. And uh, I hope if you've never been to an event before you come, you can see the alcohol facility. Please come and come to our conference in June. Thank you. So, so back to Natasha. What I'd like to talk about briefly is a follow-up on my research, uncovering something that I knew at the time, but I think is even more important today. And even though the core fundamental reasons for the research prove positive, that I was able to cryopreserve the uh, nematode, C. elegans, and bring them back with their long-term memory intact. Can we preserve an animal that is in fertility state, in other words, pregnant, and would the offspring survive that preservation? What if there was a case for that? Well, interestingly enough, and it's a side part of my research, in uh, one of the animals that I did cryopreserve, I noticed in the Petri dish that the nematode, which was a hermaphrodite, was indeed pregnant and uh, gave birth after it was brought back from crop preservation. So it went into vitrification, revived, warmed up in the warming bath, and put in the Petri dish in the agar in a healthy environment, and um, it laid its eggs. And I watched the eggs hatch, and I watched the little baby nematodes come out and, and I watched them very carefully to see if they were healthy. I was you know, quite shocked by it, frankly. And the behavior was positive for health and vitality. 
And those little babies grew up to be, you know, their adult stage, which is not very long in the lifespan of a nematode. I think it's important that we touch on some heartfelt realities. I think one of the strongest educational points we need to make today for the field of longevity is about the humaneness of being human. Not only through the work, of course, Max Moore and Gray Fay and, and Aubrey de Grey and, and so many others of you who have devoted your lives to your particular longevity protocols and uh, practices. Um, I think that looking at that is, is very important for us in bringing cryonics to the mainstream, which touches on what Greg said as far as the realization that we all need to sign up, as well as uh, what Max said in, in reminding us that age ought not to be an issue. Um, life happens and, and unintended consequences are often right around the corner when we least expect them. So I hope you all heed to those, those salvos that are so important for all of us. I just uh, very briefly, uh, someone asked a question about uh, whether there had been some small mammal work that might uh, be similar to what Natasha had done on uh, C. elegans. And the answer is not really, but uh, long, long ago, people were able to freeze hamsters and rats, but mostly hamsters, and thaw them out and have normal behavior in the animals after up to 63% of their brain water had been converted into ice. And just before Jerry Leaf died, he and I uh, came up with a plan. We were going to train uh, hamsters and then repeat that same experiment to show, to show if memory could survive freezing and thawing in a mammal. But uh, Laura Deming wants to do that experiment. So hopefully we'll have some uh, Natasha-like uh, results pretty soon, but this time in mammals and not just in worms. Thank you, Greg. That's excellent. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So I think probably everyone here wants to eat and party. So... So let me give you a toast for tonight. I raise a glass. I really raise a glass to you and your unlimited lifespan. My wish for you is that you have complete happiness and health and that we may grow old together forever. May you live as long as you want and never want for as long as you live. Cheers to you. Hey, all. My mission in this community of brainiacs is to be a fire starter out there in the world. I wish for all of you here, reach longevity, escape velocity. My toast will be live long and prosper. You stole my line. Um, so I'd like to say uh, a toast to two things, open-mindedness and aiming high. I want to offer a toast to our optimistic future. I want to thank that I think is so influential. Lana Del Rey, she has a song titled The Lost for Life. And I'd like to give a toast to the lost for life. Before you go, I want to invite everybody at the meeting to unmute themselves and give a round of applause for Natasha.